It's the DNP Project Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitale. DNP versus PhD. In this episode, we will clarify the key differences between the DNP degree and the PhD degree. So welcome to the DMP Project podcast, where we share tips, inspiration, and more. And today we're going to outline and discuss some of the key differences between the DMP degree and other terminal degrees, especially the PhD. My name is Dr. Molly Bradshaw, and I'm one of the hosts of this podcast, and I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Tracy Vitale. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Molly. How are you? Good. So when we start this conversation, um, I think it's one of the most fundamental and critical conversations that a DMP student is going to have. So we want to make sure that students out there are clear about what the differences are between these terminal degrees. And so just some foundational points to throw out there to get us started. Um, The Doctor of Nursing Practice degree, it is a terminal practice focused degree in nursing. Um, there's lots of expansion of DMP programs right now. There's a lot of good statistics you can read on the American Association of Colleges of Nursing website. They have like some fast facts and different things that you can read. We'll put those in our show notes. But basically, um, as you get this degree, there's a couple of different entry points. You can enter a BSN uh, program or a BSN to DMP program, or you can have a master's degree in nursing and then enter what we call a post-master's DMP program. And there are some other outlying options, but those are the two main ones. Um, So as part of the degree process, we design curriculum for a DMP program really based on a document called the DMP Essentials. And that's a document that you can pull up from the American Association of Colleges of Nursing website. It was published in 2006, and at the time of this recording, it is under revision. Uh, We were anticipating um, a release of that document, the updated version, in 2020, but we're still not real sure how the COVID-19 pandemic is going to impact that. It's delayed some of the committee work and things like that, but essentially, this document is, it outlines some of the fundamental skills that we think all uh, nurses prepared with a DNP degree should have, and we'll talk about those in another episode in a little bit more detail. But uh, fundamentally, we just want students to appreciate that that's uh, where the curriculum is driven from in a lot of these uh, programs. And also, as part of a DNP degree, students complete a DNP project. Now, a PhD, stu- PhD student completes a dissertation, but in the DNP uh, programs, we're completing DNP projects. And so we'll get into that in just a second, but I was hoping that you could explain to us, Tracy, what does it mean to have a practice-focused degree? Because the word practice, does that mean bedside nursing? How do we know what the word practice means? Sure, great. Thanks, Molly. So um, we um, we pulled up the definition mm-hmm. as the American Association of Colleges of Nurses defines practice Um, of a practice-focused degree. So I think this is important for both students and faculty to really understand and and take to heart when thinking about the education and and what goes into it. So AAC defines practice as uh, specifically nursing practice as conceptualized in this document refers to any form of nursing intervention that influences healthcare outcomes for individuals or populations including the direct care of individual patients, management of care for individuals and populations, administration of nursing and healthcare organizations, and the development and implementation of health policy. And preparation at the practice doctorate level includes advanced preparation in nursing based on nursing science and is at the highest level of nursing practice. Right. So, so can we pause? I was going to say, can we take a deeper dive into that just a second? Sure. So I just want to be clear for everyone, because you're a nurse executive, a nurse leader, that type thing. So maybe for the nurse out there that's listening to this, that's in that role, um, we just want to be clear that AACN is saying that executive leadership 
is an advanced role in nursing and it is um it is actually nursing practice and talk a little bit more about that yeah so i think that when we think about um our practice as nurse leaders um it's it's different than an advanced clinical skill but it does require a higher level of knowledge and practice it's using evidence that's out there you know as the definition says based in in nursing science um, to guide the practice of nursing leadership and those that we that we oversee um, it's using the evidence that's out there to help guide decision making processes so mm -hmm. it absolutely translates to both those in a clinical role as well as in a nursing leadership role because mm -hmm. I think the easy way to think about it is, you know, I'm a nurse practitioner, so I've got, you know, 30 patients that I've got lined up. And so practice to me means my 30 patients that are lined up that I've got to see or the CRNAs out there or the midwives or those other type of roles. So we just want to make sure we really um, emphasize to the audience that the way we define practice, it is inclusive of those other types of roles. Uh, we'll talk in a later episode about nurse educators, but um, for right now, we just want to be clear that it, it is a practice-focused terminal degree in nursing. But Tracy, uh, tell us a little bit more about really some of the differences in these degrees, because the DMP is a degree, it's not a role in nursing. So talk to us a little bit about the DMP compared to the PhD as a degree. Sure. So as we have already started to say, the DNP is practice focused um, versus the PhD, which is more research focused. Um, our DNP degree is designed more for a local context. It's not intended uh, to be generalizable in the, in the sense of our PhD colleagues. Um, and as you had briefly mentioned before, the key difference uh, between the DNP and the PhD is we, we as DMPs have a final academic product that's called the DNP project, um, while our PhD colleagues have a, a dissertation. They are, uh, each of these three are just some examples of the difference between the two, but I think that these are really the, the three that bubble to the surface in terms of that conversation that happens often and in, in terms of the difference between the two. Um, and it can become a challenge, I think as nurses, um, as DNPs or DNP students, we really need to advocate for an understanding of the difference because I'm sure uh, you, you likely experienced the same thing I did when, when I told my friends and family that I was going back for my DNP. Um, they always introduced me as, oh, this is Tracy, she's going for her PhD. Or, oh, this is Tracy, she just graduated with her doctorate. Oh, you have a PhD now. And you know, I think that while it can become tiresome, we have a responsibility to uh, correct and um, remind folks that, that no, I have a DNP and it's different and mm -hmm. maybe highlight some of those differences. Mm -hmm. And I wanna uh, share with the audience one of the ways that I explain that, that's a great point. Um, I always think of, you know, we talk about this gap in utilization of evidence in practice, you know, so we're a practice focused degree, but it takes 17 years for new information to be utilized in clinical practice. So I always kind of explain to people that my PhD colleagues are the experts of generating the science and generating the evidence to an extent. And my job is to decide how to use it. Um, should I use it? The best way to um, use it to help my patients. And then I have an ability to evaluate is it helping or not? Should I keep doing this or not? But my role um, as a DMP, at least the way I see it, is I'm more focused on the utilization, the translation, the um, implementation, if you will, of the evidence in clinical practice. So those are my expertise, those are our expertise. And it's a different skill set than it is to, um, to follow the more traditional um, hypothesis. Now, I would say too, we certainly borrow some of the same um, concepts, you know, sure. 
um, in terms, especially statistics and, and um, evaluation techniques and things like that, but the purpose is different. Um, my purpose is more my local, the organization I'm working for, the patients that I'm trying to help, the population that I'm working with. So that's what we mean really by the local context. I'm not really as concerned about the bigger world to some extent. Um, so that's just one of the ways that I quickly explain that though is I'm more focused on how to utilize it in clinical practice and evaluate, did it help or not? Should I keep doing that or not? So in my mind, that's one of the distinctions. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, some folks uh, might even have had the experience with being asked, um, is it easier? Is a DNP easier than a PhD? Um, my answer is it's different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some folks look, just at the surface value of how long of the pro how long is each program and mm -hmm. equate the length of the program with how easy it is. Um, I would probably challenge that argument by asking them, have they ever tried to change somebody's behavior? Because if you're trying to change practice, um, mm -hmm. that is not an easy thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. So it is it is a different skill set. I agree with you 100%. Um, and while they're different, um, I think we also need to consider how we can work collaboratively. And I know that you yes. and I have plans for that in another, in another podcast episode. Um, mm -hmm. But there's certainly room in the world for us to be working together um, and allow the work of each of us to build upon each other's. Mm -hmm. And I want to circle back to something you said earlier about, you know, your family and friends saying, oh, this is Tracy. She's got her PhD. Another experience that a student or even a graduate might have is when can you call yourself doctor and when can you not call yourself a doctor? So um, I just want to clarify that the term doctor, you know, doctor, just means that you have a terminal degree. Now, historically, when we say the word doctor, the American public, and really maybe the global public, tend to think of the physician, um, the physician role as the doctor, you know, the doctor's here uh, to see me, or, or that type of thing. So, our, you know, we have lots of colleagues now, our pharmacy colleagues, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, it, the list goes on, but there are other um, derivatives of healthcare that require a doctoral degree, and we all earn the title doctor when we have achieved our, our terminal degree. Uh, regardless of whatever that terminal degree is, MD, DO, um, chiropractor, physical therapist, occupational therapist, you know, if you've got that terminal degree, academically, your title is doctor. However, we are healthcare providers and we want to be careful to introduce ourselves to our patients in a way that is consistent with our role on the healthcare team. So for example, as a nurse practitioner, when I see patients, I do not uh, put uh, Dr. Bradshaw on my prescription pads or I don't come into the room and say I'm Dr. Bradshaw. I just come in the room and say, I'm Molly, I'm the nurse practitioner because the nurse practitioner is my role on the healthcare team. So I, I just want to, throw that out there that the term doctor doesn't describe your role, it describes a degree that you earned. And that's a shift that we're gonna have to work on um, in healthcare is using that correct language. And I wanna caution the audience that sometimes there are state regulations about how you can list your credentials, how you can introduce yourself. Now, academically, when I'm giving a presentation and when I'm writing a paper and when I'm doing things in an academic, you know, my students call me Dr. Bradshaw, but my role when I'm teaching students is an academic role. So therefore my title is based on my degree. So um, just kind of be careful about understanding and appreciating the difference between calling yourself doctor, like the context of how you're using that, um, is it a, a prefix? Is that, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. So. so I, so uh, to have some fun, my children have been known to say my mom is a doctor, but not one that can help anybody. Ooh. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so. funny. So certainly I, I would agree that the context of when you're using uh, 
using the title doctor is is yeah. critically important. But I think that's so true and so real and and such a common oh my gosh, it's so common. And especially for all the maybe the uh, nurse practitioners and things out there when I told my patients that I was going back to school to get my doctorate, you know, they would say, "Well, you already prescribed my medicines. You're already my doctor. Like, what do you I thought you were?" And they'll say, "I thought you were a doctor. You're my doctor." And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a nurse practitioner and I can prescribe medicine, but it's different. And so there's a lot of that conversation that has to go on, but it starts with knowing as long as we know, and we have an understanding, then as you say, we have a responsibility to teach others, but starting to have an ability to summarize some of those key differences between DMP and PhD is a good place to start. And if people want to take a deeper dive into that, there's a lesson dedicated to that in our workbook, uh, you know, where you can go through, there's, e there's a lot more to it than that. We don't mean to oversimplify it, um, but it's, it's definitely um, a place that we can start. Absolutely. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about the DMP project as an overall product. So uh, keep listening and check out the next podcast because uh, it's, it's going to be a good one. Um, and just as a reminder, always follow the guidelines for your DNP program. And I think uh, Molly's point to follow your, the recommendations of your individual state for the use of titles and uh, what's most appropriate is, is important to keep in mind. Um, if you're interested in contacting us, you can email us at dnpsuccess at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at, at dnpsuccess. Uh, same name, we're on Instagram. And if you like what you're hearing, check out our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe at dnpsuccess. You've been listening to Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitale on the DNP Project podcast. Check out the DMP Project YouTube channel at DNP Success on YouTube.